In this video, we'll talk about acromegaly. So acromegaly is a disorder that happens due to the problem in growth hormone secretion and the tumor in pituitary. So there are two types of similar terms known as gigantism and acromegaly. Both lead to excessive and uncontrolled growth. So, but there are fine line differences between these two. So excessive GH secretion is common between these two situations. But when excessive GH is secreted is different. So the commonality is GH excessive GH secretion. In case of gigantism, it happens in the childhood or the adolescence period. And for acromegaly, the excessive amount of GH is secreted during adulthood. And this is the difference. So more technically, what happens is that there is epiphyseal plate in the bone that closes after a point of time when the person is reaching its adolescence and the teenage is over. So this epiphyseal growth plate is the main site of growth in the longitudinal uh, or big bones. Now what happens is at this particular site cartilage is formed by proliferation and hypertrophy of the cells and they, they actually synthesize extracellular matrix, deposit them on the bone and basically elongates the bone over time. So the event of epiphyseal plate closure happens late in adolescence. So obviously if growth hormone is secreted more before that time period, it would lead to gigantism. If it is more after this time period, it would lead to acromegaly. Our focus of this video is basically acromegaly. In acromegaly, the increase in growth hormone secretion might be due to a pituitary tumor that might lead to too much of growth hormone secretion. And these uh, individuals have characteristic feature of extended jaw and very distinct jawline. They have basically large tongue, deep voice, and they have coarsening facial features which are more prominent with age. They have large hands, impaired glucose tolerance and abnormally high IGF level in the blood. Also, there could be a defect in multitude of levels. For example, if we talk about head, uh, if we talk about head and brain, there are multiple problems for, such as they experience frequent headaches. They have cognitive and IQ related problems. They have soft tissue swelling. They always have a broad nose and many other problems are there in these individuals. Also, they have a poor eyesight and vision might be impaired in these individuals. It's subjected to specificity, but in most of the individuals, vision might be off. There could be skin thickening, oily and sweaty skin. There could be heart related issues with uh, malforming valves. There could be left ventricle hypertrophy. There could be lung related issues and multitude of issues can happen in these individuals. So even if they have a very big, strong looking body, internal organs are in many terms compromised. But why does this happen? The moral of this story is basically boiling down to the growth hormone. So we have to understand the secretion production and the regulation of the growth hormone to understand this disease pathology better. So if we cut a cross section of these anterior pituitary, we would see these kind of zones. There are thyrotrops, somatotrops, corticotrops, lactotrops, gonadotrops, etc. Re region. Among these, somatotroph, which is written in red, it is the region which secretes the growth hormone. So growth hormone is basically a peptide type hormone and it is secreted from the pituitary. Now let me tell you, this particular growth hormone secretion happens in a pulsatile fashion and this pulse peaks at every two hours and there is a huge peak when we exercise or just after we sleep. Anyway, there are many triggers for growth hormone secretion. For example, when we have low glucose level, when we uh, have elevated estrogen or testosterone levels, especially during the puberties, or when we are undergoing stress or a trauma or fever. Sometimes it has been shown that in different stages of sleep, there is an elevated level of growth hormone secretion. Now growth hormone can alter different biological functions, including cell metabolism, growth, division, etc. It can impart its effect on carbohydrate metabolism. It has an anti-insulin like effect, but that means it would elevate the blood glucose level. Um, it would alter the fat metabolism. It would break down the fat, increase the fatty acids in blood, and it would lead to lipolysis. 
in terms of protein metabolism it promotes protein anabolism or protein synthesis so it, it would build more muscles so overall we can understand in terms of entire metabolism it has profound effect also most of this effect that is imparted by the growth hormone is not directly by itself it is done via another protein secreted by the liver known as igf or insulin like growth factor so basically all of these growth cell metabolism and division effects are actually indirect it also affect the thyroid hormone so uh, i'll tell you how basically thyroid is secreted into the blood and it is carried by specific protein known as uh, tbg thyroid binding protein so growth hormone lead to the production of these thyroid hormone binding protein and thereby make thyroid hormone available to different places of the body and that's how indirectly it also regulate the thyroid hormone since thyroid hormone basically regulates many aspects of metabolism in the body so no wonder in growth hormone overproduction there is a problem in metabolism altogether now there is basically multi organ effect of growth hormone that we already talked about just to summarize it affects adipose tissue by decreasing lipogenesis and increasing lipolysis it influences the liver to secrete basically igf1 it increase gluconeogenesis that means making glucose from amino acids and other sources glycogenolysis it breaks down the existing glycogen reserve in the liver it also have effect on mu muscles it decreases the chances of atrophy but increase the chances of hypertrophy it has effects on bone obviously it lead to the bone growth osteogenesis and chondriogenesis is promoted when there is too much of growth hormone now growth hormone at a molecular level act via these igf1 receptors so basically igf receptor 1 binds to insulin receptor like substrate 1 it also it can work with like the grb2 sos or map kinase components but downstream effect is basically activation of pi3 akt pathway and mtor is involved M mtor is kind of like a master regulator of all anabolic pathway is ultimately lead to the uh, activation of s phosphorase 6k and this phosphorase 6 ultimately lead to activation of many genes alternatively the ras raf map kinase pathway can also come into the picture and ultimately lead to the production of the genes which are all together regulating growth survival and proliferation and thereby growth hormone imparts its own effect on different organs but growth hormone secretion is highly regulated it is important to understand that but because this aspect goes wrong in case of gigantism or in case of acromegaly so this is hypothalamus pituitary and we are looking at bone and the uh, liver so here we have the pituitary secreting growth hormone which acts positively on muscles and livers lead to many changes there is a hormone known as ghrh or growth hormone releasing hormone that triggers that, that is secreted from the hypothalamus and triggers growth hormone release from the pituitary now what happens when there is too much of growth hormone it has a negative regulation so it tells the uh, hypothalamus to reduce the production of ghrh and thereby reduce the production of gh now if there is too much of growth hormone also liver secretes somatomedin it inhibits the hypothalamus again secondly hypothalamus secretes another protein known as somatostatin that acts on pituitary prevents the somatotropin or growth hormone secretion thereby a three way negative feedback loop operates in this entire axis and that's how precisely it is regulated but this regulation goes off in acromegaly that lead to several problems moral of the story is basically too high or too less gh can lead to problem too much high gh can lead to gigantism or acromegaly depends on when it is high and it can also lead to cretinism or dwarfism if it is too low so that is why a, a balanced level of gh is really important but what are the treatment options so the treatment option includes removing the cause that means surgical removal of the tumor which might have caused excessive growth hormone production in adulthood there could be also treatments like uh, basically somatostatin analog or basically things that can inhibit the entire axis that can work like a negative feedback to reduce growth hormone action there could be also a uh, usage of growth hormone receptor antagonist such that the effect of the growth hormone cannot be imparted even if there are too much of growth hormone present so thereby just by modulating this hormonal axis one can have a treatment of uh, acromegaly so i hope this video was informative if you like this video give it a big thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe see you in next video